Good morning, dear students. My name is Farhan Mazar, and the subject today we are studying is Cambridge O Levels of Physics 5054. Uh, today we are going to, in this video, concentrate on a on a device which we call Ripple Tank. Ripple Tank is a simple device which is used to observe the behavior of the waves in water. So for this purpose, the Ripple Tank is basically a tray made of glass, and it is filled with the water and it is at a little height from the floor and uh, we use a vibrator and we use a wooden rod with the help of this vibrator or you can say a motor uh, this uh, wooden rod is moved up and down and when this touch the surface of the water it produces waves in the water and we place a lamp on the top of this tank and when the light passes through these waves the shadow of the waves is formed on the floor and when you observe that shadow of the waves and from observing that shadow, um, you see the shadow will be bright and dark, bright and dark lines. So, you know, the, the, the trough that will create a dark and uh, the crust that will create a bright band on the floor. So by observing these uh, shadows of the waves on the floor, we can check the behavior of the water waves. So this is a simple device, ripple tank. And the literature which I'm using, which is showing up on your screen, this is from uh, the uh, from a book, uh, which is on the website of the uh, eLearn Punjab. From there, I have downloaded this uh, chapter. This is basically from the 10 matrix physics book. Uh, the ripple tank is a device to produce water waves and to study their characteristics. This apparatus consists of a rectangular tray having glass bottom and is placed nearly half meter above the surface of a table. Figure 10.11. Waves can be produced on the surface of the water present in the tray by means of a vibrator or you can say paddle. So uh, this vibrator is an oscillating electric motor fixed on a wooden plate uh, over the tray such that its lower surface just touch the surface of the water. On setting the vibrator on, this wooden plate starts vibrating to generate water waves consisting of straight wave fronts. And you can see this, the, the wave fronts, these are the shadows of those waves. The straight wave fronts are produced. And an electric bulb is hung above the tray to observe the image of the water waves on the paper of or screen. You can say the crust and troughs of the waves appears as bright and dark lines respectively on the screen. Now we explain the reflection of the water waves with the help of the ripple tank. So the ripple tank can be used uh, to observe the reflection. So you put a barrier in, in that tray, which will, uh, which will be at an angle uh, to the wave fronts. So place a barrier in the ripple tank, the water waves will reflect from the barrier. If the barrier is placed at an angle to the wave fronts, wave front, the reflected waves can be seen to obey the law of reflection. The angle of incidence, uh, incidence wave along the normal will be equal to the angle of reflected wave. Thus we define reflection of waves as so uh, the when the waves moving in one medium fall on the surface of another medium, they bounce back into the first medium such that the angle of incidence is equals to the angle of reflection. Here you can see we have this barrier. The wave fronts are coming in this direction. After reflection, they will go in this direction. So the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection, they both will be equal to each other. And... Uh, the speed of a wave in water depends on the depth of water. If a block is submerged in the ripple tank, the depth of the water in the, in the tank will be shallower over the block than uh, elsewhere. When the water waves enter the region of shallow water, their wavelength decreases, but the frequency of the water waves remains the same in both parts of the, of the water because it is equal to the frequency of the uh, 
vibrator. So here we have a diagram, if you observe this, here they have placed a rectangular block in the water tray. So in this portion, the depth of the water is less. In this portion, the depth of the water is more. So this is deep water, this is shallow water. So when you will produce the wave fronts, when the wave fronts will come in this region where the depth of the water is less, the water is shallow, you will observe that the wavelength of the water waves will decrease, their speed will decrease, the frequency will remain unchanged. In the deep water, the wavelength of the water waves is larger, the speed of the water waves is larger, and the frequency in both these portions of the water wave will remain the same. And then we have for the observation of refraction of the water waves, we repeat this above experiment such that the boundary between the deep and the shallow water is at some angle to the wave fronts. Here, the, the, this is the boundary of from, uh, after which the water is shallow, mm -hmm. and that is parallel to the wave fronts. And if you put, if you make that boundary in, in, in such a way that it makes an angle with the coming wave fronts, then the when the water waves when, when, when here they are in the deep water when they will come in the portion where the water is shallow and the boundary uh, of the shallow and the deep water is inclined with the it makes some angle with the wave fronts then the wave fronts water wave fronts when they will enter into the shallow water their direction will change they will bend towards the uh, uh, towards the normal and their wavelength will decrease. For the observation observation of refraction of water waves, we repeat the above experiment such that the boundary between the deep and the shallower water is at some angle to the wave front. Now we will observe that in addition to the change in the wavelength, the waves change their direction of propagation as well. Note that the direction of propagation is always normal to the wave fronts. The, this change of path of the water waves while passing from a region of deep water to that of the shallow water a shallower one is called refraction, which is defined as. So here we have that definition. So um, when a wave from one medium enters into the second medium at some angle, its direction of travel changes. So this is the refraction of the water waves. Now we observe the phenomena of diffraction of the water waves. Uh, generate straight waves in a ripple tank and place two obstacles in the line such a way that separation between them is equal to the wavelength of the water wave. After passing through a small slit between the two obstacles, the waves will spread in every direction and change into almost a semi-circular pattern. Diffraction of the waves can only be observed clearly if the size of the obstacle is comparable with the wavelength of the wave. Figure 10.17 uh, shows that the diffraction of the waves while passing through a slit with the size larger than the wavelength of the wave. Only a small diffraction occurs near the corners of the obstacle. The bending or spreading of the waves around the sharp edge or corners of obstacles or slits is called diffraction. So remember this definition. Here you can see we have <clears throat> placed barriers in the path of the straight wave fronts and this slit, this gap. And uh, that is equals to the, 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 this gap is equals to the wavelength. So when the waves passes through this gap, after passing through it, the waves become circular waves. Okay. So they are like semicircular waves. So this is called diffraction of the water waves. Here you can see the gap between the barriers or the size of that slit is more than the wavelength of uh, these water waves. So when they pass through the, the, the middle portion remains straight, but on the edges, it is bended. So this is called the diffraction of the water waves. Okay. So um, remember these things. Uh, never forget this. This was, this literature was from the, uh, e-learn Punjab and uh, that website so now let me show you another literature and that literature is uh, let me show you yeah this one this literature I have taken from the save my exam uh, uh, demonstrating the wave motion properties of waves such as the frequency, wavelength, and wave speed can be observed using the water waves in a ripple tank. So here we have a diagram of the, uh, you see, uh, 
the ripple tank. So here is a wooden bar supported by the elastic bands. And here we have a light source. And here we have water in this tray. Here we have a screen. So these bands shows the wave fronts. So basically what they say is the wave motion of water waves may be demonstrated using a ripple tank. So this is a ripple tank because these are elastic bands. So when you disturb it, so that that wooden uh, bar will touch the water surface and it will produce straight wave fronts in the water. So this is that thing. Okay, so I can tell you that <clears throat> the wavelength of the wave can be determined by using a ruler to measure the length of the screen, dividing this distance by the number of the wafers. <clears throat> so you can check how much is the length of this screen and you can count how much, how many wave fronts are there and how many waves are basically there. And then you divide the length with the number of the waves there and you will get the wavelength of the wave. The frequency can be de determined by Timing how long it takes for a given number of waves to pass a particular point, dividing the number of wave fronts by the time taken. The wave speed can then be determined by using the equation. Wave speed is equal to the frequency multiply the wavelength. This formula is very important. We call it the uh, wave equation. Uh, this literature, which is right in front of you, that is written by Miss Cathy. And this is not written by me. I have taken this literature from the save my exam. This uh, this slide is uh, from uh, the IDCSC book. And it says the <clears throat> it's a practical work they have given there. For safety purposes, you use eye protection must be worn. Uh, the behavior of the waterways can be studied in a ripple tank. It consists of a transparent tray containing water, having a light source above and, uh, uh, and a white screen below to receive the wave images. Uh, pulse, that is short burst of ripples, are obtained by dipping a finger in the water uh, or uh, for circular ripples and a ruler for a straight ripples. Continuous ripples are generated using an electric motor and a bar. The bar gives straight ripples if it is just touches the water or circular ripples if it is raised and has a small ball, ball uh, fitted to it. Continuous ripples are studied more easily if they are apparently stopped frozen by viewing the screen through a disk with, uh, with equally spaced slits, which can be spun by hand, that is, a uh, stroboscope. Stroboscope is this device, this device this girl is holding. This is called stroboscope. So if uh, you rotate this and you watch through this, then the, the pattern will become frozen. Uh, if the disk speed is such that the waves have advanced one wavelength each time, a slit passes, uh, a slit passes your eye, they appear at rest. Sketch the, sketch the appearance of this continuous ripple produced by the straight bar. What is the wavelength of the ripple tag? So this is uh, literature which was given there. Then one very important thing is about the diffraction. This literature is coming from the book of IGCSE. So the diffraction through a narrow gap. In the figure 13.110A and 13.110B, straight water waves in a ripple tank are meeting gaps formed by obstacles. In the figure 3.1.10A, the gap is narrow and the wave fronts curve around the edges of the gap, producing a circular wave front. The diffraction uh, due to an edge or wide gap in the figure 13.110b, the gap is wide 10 centimeter compared with the wavelength and the wave fronts remain straight, uh, except at the edge of the gap where some curvature around the edges occur. The spreading of waves at the edges of obstacles is called diffraction. When designing harbors, engineers use models like that in the figure 3.1.11 to study. So you can see here, uh, the wave fronts are coming after passing through here. They have become circular. Spreading of the waves after passing through a narrow gap. This gap is narrow, okay? Narrow means it is approximately equal to the wavelength. This gap is larger. Uh, figure, uh, spreading of the waves after passing through a wide gap. So in the middle, they remain straight. On the edges, they bend a little bit. This is called diffraction. So here is an example. These are, you can see the, this is actual diagram. And let me show you. So make it larger. 
So see what is happening. The wave wave fronts are coming, which are straight. After passing through this gap, and uh, they have become circular waves. Okay, circular wave front. Model of a Harper used to study wave behavior. So effect of the wavelength and the gap size on diffraction. In the figure 3.1.10a, the gap width is about the same as the wavelength of the wave. The wave fronts that passes through become circular and spread out in all directions. In the figure 3.1.10b, the gap is wide compared with the wavelength and the waves continue straight on. Some spreading occurs, but it is less obvious. So they are talking basically about, first of all, they are talking about this diagram where the gap is approximately equal to the wavelength and the waves spread in all directions. Here, only bending is done on the edges. So when the gap is larger. So diffraction at, the, at, at an edge, uh, for a single edge, diffraction will occur at edge. The spreading and the curvature of the wave front around the edge will be more noticeable for longer wavelengths. Diffraction of radio waves around an optical is shown in the figure 3.1.4a on the page 162. And this is that diagram. Here the radio waves are coming. Here is that edge of the obstacle. So that you can see they have bended. So this is called the diffraction. So my dear students, in this video, we have talked about the ripple tank, we have talked about the reflection and refraction and the diffraction of the uh, water waves and microwaves. And I hope that now you recognize these diagrams. You will never forget these diagrams because they have been tested in, the, in your exam. So I hope this uh, video will help you and it will help you to understand the concept uh, about the ripple tank and the diffraction of the water waves. So thank you very much. Have a good day. If you find this video interesting, useful uh, to you, please share the link of this video with your friends, with your junior, with your senior students, with your teachers. Also share the link of this video onto your Facebook and onto your Instagram, onto your Twitter accounts. That helps me to promote my channel. I am grateful to God that he has given me this opportunity that I can make these videos which can touch the life of so many students around the globe. Thank you very much. Have a good day. God bless you.